let the board to be completely dry, then check by means of a multimeter the main components, check the resistance of the fuses on the big board and on the small board, they should be close to 0 ohm. Check diodes U1 and U2, they should have low voltage drop in direct polarization while they uh, should act as open circuit when in reverse polarization. Check MOSFET U3 and U7. On the voltage regulators, check input voltage pin and output voltage pin to see if they are shorted to ground or if the input is shorted with the output. On the other chips, check if input voltage is shorted to ground. In particular, for DSP chip, check both power supplies pin. Internal voltage shorted with the analog voltage pin because they are supplied with the same 1.8 volt and the external I.O. voltage connected to 3.3 volt. Once you identified broken components, replace them, then power on the big board without the small board. I used the external 11 volts battery welding two wires on main connector of the big board, pins 1 and 2. Check that on the either pins, 28 and 29, there is the 12 volts. Unplug the battery, connect the small board and connect again the battery. Sometimes touch with the finger uh, the components and if you feel high temperature, unplug the battery and better think to what's happening before to break something. Check the presence of the 12 volts on MOSFET U21 source pin and on voltage regulator U24. Check the presence of the 5 volts on the U24 output. Check that the gate of the MOSFET U21 is around 12 volts, meaning that the MOSFET is acting like an open uh, circuit, an open switch, so that the drain pin should be close to 0 volt. By means of a white uh, LED lamp or a red laser, light the receiving fiber optic channel and see that the transmitting fiber optic get lighted with red light. This means that the transceiver in the OSIS controller are correctly closing the fiber optic loop and this part of the circuit is working fine. 